Good morning and welcome to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida on this Friday, the 19th of November, 2021. I'm Father Derek Larson and I'm the Assistant Rector here at Good Shepherd and I'm joined today by our Rector, Father Doug Scharf, who's going to uh, be reading along with me and doing our, our lessons for today. Uh, this service of morning prayer is streamed live every weekday morning at 9 a.m. exclusively here on Zoom. To participate, all you have to do is go to goodsheponline.org and click on the worship tab and then go down to the prayer tab. If you'll scroll down, you'll find the, surface, the service leaflet for today's service. Just look for today's date. And immediately above those service leaflets, there's an image of prayer books in the pews. If you click on that link, you'll be able to join us via Zoom. If you're unable to join us live via Zoom, you can always watch these, um, these sessions of morning prayer in our recorded version, which will be posted on all of Good Shepherd's communication channels, Facebook, YouTube, and the worship page of goodsheponline.org. They are normally pay posted about 10 a.m. Or, or just after that. It's great to be with you this morning on Friday. We just... Uh, it just started raining here in Tequesta, but it's a beautiful morning. We're thankful for the rain. So let's take just a, a, a moment of silence to center ourselves and remind ourselves that God is present with us. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let us continue with the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting, Come, let us adore him. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 102. 
Let us pray it together. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke, and my bones are hot as burning coals. My heart is smitten like grass and withered, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skin and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and groan. I am like a sparrow, lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long. And those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes for bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have lifted me up and thrown me away. My days pass away like a shadow, and I wither like the grass. But you, O oh Lord, endure forever, and your name from age to age. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to have mercy upon her. Indeed, the appointed time has come. For your servants love her very rubble and are moved to pity even for her dust. The nations shall fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion and his glory will appear. He will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless he will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high. From the heavens he beheld the earth that he might hear the groan of the captive and set those condemned to die that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord, he has brought down my strength before my time. He has shortened the numbers of my days. And I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment. As clothing, you will change them, and they shall be changed. But you are always the same and your years will never end. The children of your servants shall continue, and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning continues in the book of Maccabees, 1st Maccabees, chapter 4, verses 36 through 59. Then Judas and his brothers said, See, our enemies are crushed. Let us go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. So all the army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. There they saw the sanctuary desolate, the altar profaned, and the gates burned. In the courts they saw bushes sprung up as in a thicket, or as on one of the mountains. They saw also the chambers of the priests in ruins. Then they tore their clothes and mourned with great lamentation. They sprinkled themselves with ashes, 
and fell face down on the ground. And when the signal was given with the trumpets, they cried out to heaven. Then Judas detailed men to fight against those in the citadel until he had cleansed the sanctuary. He chose blameless priests devoted to the law, and they cleansed the sanctuary and removed the defiled stones to an unclean place. They deliberated what to do about the altar of burnt offering, which had been profaned, and they thought it best to tear it down so that it would not be a lasting shame to them that the Gentiles had defiled it. So they tore down the altar and stored the stones in a convenient place on the temple hill until a prophet should come to tell them what to do with them. Then they took unhewn stones as the law directs and built a new altar like the former one. They also rebuilt the sanctuary and the interior of the temple and consecrated the courts. They made new holy vessels and brought the lampstand, the altar of incense, and the table into the temple. Then they offered incense on the altar and lit the lamps on the lampstand, and these gave light in the temple. They placed the bread on the table and hung up the curtains. Thus, they finished all the work they had undertaken. Early in the morning, on the 25th day of the ninth month, which is the month of Kislev, in the 148th year, they rose and offered sacrifice, as the law directs, on the new altar of burnt offering that they had built. At the very season and on the very day that the Gentiles had profaned it, it was dedicated with songs and harps and lutes and cymbals. All the people fell on their faces and worshipped and blessed heaven who had prospered them. So they celebrated and dedicated the dedication of the altar for eight days and joyfully offered burnt offerings. They offered a sacrifice of well-being and a thanksgiving offering. They decorated the front of the temple with golden crowns and small shields. They restored the gates and the chambers for the priests and fitted them with doors. There was very great joy among the people, and, they dis and the disgrace brought by the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and all the assembly of Israel determined that every year at that season, the day of dedication of the altar should be observed with joy and gladness for eight days, beginning with the 25th day of the month of Kislev. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We pray a song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise, glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths and the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second lesson this morning continues in the book of Revelation, the 22nd chapter verses 6 through 13. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true, for the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. See, I am coming soon. 
Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, 
which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by your grace, your servant Elizabeth of Hungary recognized and honored Jesus in the poor of this world. Grant that we, following her example, may with love and gladness serve those in any need or trouble. In the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This morning, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Hyderabad in Pakistan, the Right Reverend Kalim John, Bishop, in the Diocese of Idadan, I Ibadan in Nigeria, Most Reverend Joseph O. Akinfenwa, Archbishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, in the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Presiding Bishop and Primate. We pray for our mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today, especially Amanda, Brian and family, Dale Ann, Howard, Catherine, Kimberly, Melissa, Philip, Allison, Audrey, Cliff, Rob, Jane, Roger, Richard, Phil, Keith, Patricia, Grace, Les, Karen, George, Wendy, Bob and Joetta, Leah and Kayla, Peter and Mirabel, Ray, Rick, Bunny, and Dali, or Ali. We pray also today for ministries of current activity, remembering especially Run for the Pies. The Good Shepherd may host an annual civic event in the Jupiter Tequesta area while supporting our food pantry service to the hungry and our giving team, that the mission of Good Shepherd may be set on a firm financial foundation through estimate of giving efforts for today, tomorrow, and forever. And we pray our Good Shepherd Parish prayer, Almighty and everlasting God, Make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, we invite your prayers of petition intercession and thanksgiving either shared with all in the chat box or held in the silence of your hearts.
I ask your prayers this morning for the Jupiter High School marching band as they travel today by bus and will be traveling through Monday. We pray, O oh Lord, for your protection upon them and upon their staff and chaperones. Strengthen them and give them focus and give them joy as they do what they love to do. We pray for the family of Walter, for the family and friends of Nancy, we give you thanks for the rain today, and we pray for those without shelter caught up in it. As we approach Thanksgiving, we give thanks for all the blessings in our life. We give you thanks for this community, for Good Shepherd, and the place it is for each of us. We give you thanks for Sherry's cat, Titan, who, who has come home. We pray for her patience and for Sherry that she may be caring in, the time, in their time of need. We pray for safe travels for all those who are, are traveling this weekend and the coming week to be with family, to be with friends, to go on trips. Bless them in their travels, protect them, keep them safe, and go with them along the way. And we pray together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, all. We hope to see you this weekend sometime for one of our services. And if not, we'll see you again Monday morning for morning prayer at nine o'clock. Have a great weekend.